Hey guys, I'm just going to quickly run through a tutorial to set up a Kubernetes cluster on Azure using the new Azure CLI 2.0, which is currently in preview. So I'm just starting on a Windows host. I've just got PowerShell open as vanilla PowerShell. Uh, if it looks a little bit different to yours, it's because I'm running it in something called CMDR or Commander potentially. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go and have a look for the Azure SDK in uh, Docker registry. You can see you get a number of different responses, but this is the one that we're after here, the Python one, as you can see by the description, Microsoft Azure CLI 2.0 preview. So we're just going to copy that down here. Like we want the latest version. And we'll just start it with a bash prompt. Okay, brilliant. Now we're at the bash prompt inside the container. So now we should have access to the new CLI, which we do. Perfect. In order to actually execute any of these commands against my Azure subscription, I'm going to have to log in. So this is just going to give me a prompt. It's going to give me a URL, aka dimes forward slash device login, and a one-time pass. So I'll just open up IE. So this will now just uh, go and authenticate me, and then in a second it'll return with all, a list of all my subscriptions. There you go, it's a list of all my subscriptions. I'm just going to clear them. So everything within the um, new Azure Resource Manager based API is based around these resources and these different resource providers. Um, and here's a list of all of the ones that are supported by the CLI. So in order to deploy the cluster, we're going to have to first create what's called a resource group. And that is here within these commands. So we're just going to go Azure group. And then in order to find out what subcommands we have, we can just do a dash dash help against that. And that will go and list the subcommands that we need. In this case, we are going to create one and just happen to know what the parameters are. So it's a name. So we're going to call this cube and a location. And the spell create right. Okay, so that's now created as a new resource group. Now we need to make a deployment into that resource group of all the different components, such machines, the networking, etc., that make up a, a Kubernetes cluster. So we'll do AZ. And now the resource provider that we're after is this ACS. So if we just run that, it should give us, oh, it's obviously going to give us an error. I missed out the help. So we'll just run it with help. That will give us a list of the subcommands. Again, we've got similar things, browse, create, delete, etc. Uh, in this case, we're just going to go ahead and do a creation. And what we need is a name for this. So call it a cube cluster. We need a resource group, which we've just created. And we can also optionally specify a orchestrator type. In this case, we're going to use Kubernetes. I can spell it. Uh, if you don't provide an orchestration orchestrator type, it will default to uh, Mesosphere's DCOS. There's no bias there, but you've got to pick one. Uh, and additionally, if you you can either provide an SSH key that you've pre-created, if you haven't created one, then you can just do this. And then that will go ahead and create the SSH key as part of the, the um, actual creation, and then upload the public cert and uh, store the private public cert within this container. And there's the generation of the public private key pair. I'm just going to leave this to go into provision. It usually takes about 10, 15 minutes. And there's quite a lot of components for this um, provision. I think the default is three slaves, uh, slave nodes, but we can have a look at that uh, once it comes up. OK, so that deployment has now uh, successfully completed. And we've uh, got a response to the command line. Uh, unfortunately, the outputs from the ARM template that is actually deployed are, are kind of captured and not returned. So in order to get the um, fully qualified domain name of, of our master in the Kubernetes cluster, we've actually got to do a little bit of uh, probing of the cluster first. Uh, just doing this ACS 
uh, show will we'll give us a bit more information about the cluster. And as you can see here, we get the fully qualified domain name. Uh, and also we have admin username and some public keys up here. So we just grab this. Um, what we can do as, as those certs that were uploaded are actually saved within uh, this container, we should be able to just do an, Azure, uh, an SSH into Azure user and then paste in the full qualified domain name. Go ahead and do that. Yes. Okay, now we're SSH onto the master node. Uh, as you can see, there's not a lot really going on here. Um, so what we need to do, go ahead and do a docker ts. And you'll see here's the actual containers, uh, the components of, of Kubernetes that are running. You've got the scheduler, the proxy, the API server, um, the managers, etc., etc. But uh, this isn't all that useful to us. So we're just going to drop out of this and back to our um, bash console. So what we want to do here now is we want to actually use the Kubernetes CLI, which allows us to do a lot more uh, management um, commands on top of Kubernetes. So we're going to go ahead and install that by the uh, Azure command line. So all we have to do is that. Okay, once that's returned, now we need to go ahead and get the credentials. Um, from the server so that we know how to connect to the different components. So again, you can use the Azure CLI for this. So that should go get the credentials and then install them in our home directory uh, under a .cube folder, the hidden directory. So they should be installed at location. Assuming I've got home set. There you go. So there's the uh, the config file that's just downloaded. Okay, now uh, we've we've got the CL, CTL. We can execute some commands. There you can see um, we've got the three agents, as I said before, and the one master, and the current status of each of them. Um, and there is something as a concept called pods within Kubernetes. And I'm sure if you're familiar with Kubernetes, you'll know about these. So um, we could just go and say, okay, what, what pods have we got running? And pods really are just your uh, applications that are executing. And obviously at the moment, we, we don't have any pods. So we're just gonna go ahead and uh, run one. So it just runs one called Nginx and point it to the image Nginx. And we'll specify it to have exactly one replica. Now it's kicked off a deployment. So if we went to do execute get pods again, and you'll see that there's currently one container being created. So another thing that we can do at this point, and obviously you can you can kind of administrate your cluster as you would normally at this point, um, but we can expose the UI by calling proxy. Now this is gonna it's gonna take over this interactive shell now. So if I control C out of this, it's obviously going to kill the server. So at this point, I'm going to have to go ahead and create a new console. If we just do a quicker Docker PS, we'll be able to see that there is a container running, and that is the one that's running the Azure CLI, the one that we previously connected to. And now I need to really, I need to enter that container without stopping the running process, which is actually that web server that's running. So in order to do that, I'm going to run exec dash and just hit a bash prompt. If I could spell exact right, that might work. So you go, now I'm at the bash prompt and our web server is still ticking away over here undisturbed. So now that I'm inside the uh, this particular container, localhost is exposed to me. Um, so this is listening here on this port. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I don't have curl installed, so I'll just have to use the get. Uh, 127 or 8001 slash UI. So let's go on ahead and downloaded this index.html. And I know it's not going to be very particularly nice, uh, but here's an output that basically just says upgrade your browser. Um, <laughs> I wasn't actually using the browser, you'd have to set the user agent, etc., to actually get the, the content back properly. Uh, but it proves that there is a dashboard up and running. Here's a Kubernetes dashboard. Um, and obviously, you, you'd normally go and browse that through 
uh, an actual web browser. In this case, I'm not doing that because I'm doing it through Shell. Uh, so from this point on, you can just crack on as you normally would with your uh, Kubernetes cluster up and running on Azure.